If you're an existing viewer of the channel, you know I hold free speech as the ultimate sign of a free society. So what I'm gonna say might seem contradictory to that position, but I assure you, it's not. If you listen closely, you'll understand why it's actually consistent with my principles. I've been against a nationwide blanket ban on TikTok from the jump, but these last few days have been pivotal in changing my perspective on that. After doing a lot of thinking, I've come to the conclusion that any good that TikTok might be doing with being accessible to the world is dwarfed by the dangers it poses to the world, particularly to democratic societies. On the 23rd of March, 2023, the CEO of TikTok, Mr. Xiao Chu, was brought in front of Congress to testify. The session lasted for almost five hours, so you better believe there was a lot that was asked of him. I watched the testimony in its entirety while it was happening. There was a lot of back and forth on things ranging from content moderation to child exploitation. And also topics like the prevalence of indecent content and privacy related concerns were discussed. But the most important part was the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP being granted unrestricted access to all the data gathered by TikTok of Americans. What was pleasantly surprising about the whole testimony is the fact that both Democrats and Republicans were aligned on this one issue. It was a sight to behold to see them all unified for a cause. But then the next day, they went back to hating each other with a burning passion. While all the reasons of child exploitation and privacy are alarming in their own right, I don't believe they make up a strong enough case for banning the app altogether. In my opinion, what actually justifies banning the app is a lot more sinister. Let me lay it all out for you. You see, after the hearing wrapped up at the end of the day on the 23rd of March, Every major information platform like Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok had these clips from the congressional hearing. There were a few clips that garnered a disproportional amount of attention, some of which were the ones where the elected representatives came off as straight up ignorant to how the app fundamentally functions. But there were also those clips where the lawmakers raised legitimate concerns over CCP's direct involvement in the company. It was being covered extensively by internet personalities with both sides being promulgated depending on the source. By both sides, I mean the TikTok CEO on one side and the lawmakers on the other. The reason for the testimony trending on the internet was because 150 million Americans use TikTok. That's almost one in two Americans. No other social media company comes anywhere close to that strong of a market share in proportion to the younger population of the country. TikTok is an exception in its incredible success. So the implication of banning the app would be quite consequential in regards to how many Americans would be directly affected. And that explains all the eyeballs the congressional hearing drew. What made the aftermath of the testimony interesting is not how much it was being covered, but the way in which it was being covered. At the end of the day of the day of the testimony, everywhere from Twitter to Instagram, including TikTok, had clips where the CEO looked bad in certain exchanges. And of course, there were also clips where the old Congress members had no idea what they were talking about. But regardless, ban TikTok was the number one trending hashtag on Twitter. Now, the next day is when it started getting a little weird, on one app in particular. I'll give you a second to guess which one it was. If you guessed TikTok, you deserve a pat on the back. TikTok had done something to their algorithm where you weren't being shown any clips that put the TikTok CEO in a bad light. I noticed this right away because I started getting some incredibly strange content on my feed. It had the scent of propaganda all over it. There were clips of people participating in what bothered on worship behavior to the CEO. There's no other way to put it. These people were exhibiting cult of personality behavior. To be fair to TikTok, I'm sure I would have been able to find people on Twitter that were just as in love with the CEO as these people on TikTok were. But the thing that set TikTok apart from the rest of the social media companies, I was seeing these clips to the exclusion of everything else. It got to a point where it was uncomfortable to watch people admiring the CEO in their clips and defending him at the same time. Let me actually play a short clip for you to give you a taste of the cringe fest I was subjecting myself to. This video is for the CEO of TikTok, Mr. Sho Chu. Mr. Chu. We are so sorry. The people that harassed you at the congressional hearing yesterday, they don't represent us. One congressman said yesterday that you were able to do what nothing else has, and that's unite the right and the left. But they're not just united against you. He doesn't look concerned when he gets questioned. You can tell he's trained for these answers, and he's very composed. This shows both intelligence and confidence. Yeah. To be clear, I'm not claiming that these people were paid influencers because I went to their profiles and checked their history of content. They all appear to be regular content creators. But you know what caught my eye is the fact that the posts on their profiles in which they were praising the CEO were doing exponentially much better in terms of the engagement numbers in contrast with their other videos on the profile. And this was the case with every single person I was getting on my feed who was doing this. There were both comments and videos of people saying how embarrassed they were of their government for harassing their beloved CEO. 
Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Why are you creaming so hard over the CEO? I digress. Anyways, on the third day since the testimony, the 25th of March, I open TikTok and lo and behold, the first video I see is the CEO of TikTok himself talking about the testimony. He mentioned being overwhelmed by all the positive response from everyone. So I went down to the comment section to see if everyone was buying this whole thing. And to my surprise, every single comment was positive. I couldn't fucking believe it. So I kept scrolling further and further down. I must have been three to 400 comments deep and there was not one critical comment in sight, not even one. Again, to be fair, I probably would have been able to find at least one if I dug deep enough, but this post had 180,000 comments and it had 25 million views with 5 million likes on the video. So anyone else with a skeptical take on this whole thing would have been just as confused as I was. Most people aren't going to scroll down 180,000 comments deep. You would have to be living in your mom's basement to scroll for that long, but I live in my mom's living room, so I've got high standards, bro. Well, to get back to the point. So my point with all this was that anyone wanting to scroll down would not have been able to find one single critical comment of the CEO and they would have just given up and decided that it was all actually real. If I didn't know any better, I would have genuinely thought he had every single person going for him and taking his side. But I'm a 90s kid, I've been around the internet blog for a while now. So this was too perfect to be true. Because the internet is the kind of paradise where you're gonna find loving people disagreeing with you on even the most innocuous of things. For God's sake, I've seen arguments over whether water is wet and they wanted to win the argument like their lives were at stake. But because users on TikTok are nothing short of unicorns, everyone magically happened to hold a homogenous take on the whole saga. Like come the fuck on, anyone with a brain cell could smell the BS from a mile away. But then again, you have to keep in mind that this platform predominantly consists of young generation. And they are the easiest to fool. If you can't quite tell how I'm feeling about this whole thing, let me be a little more explicit for some of you neurodivergent people. What I think happened was after the first day of the hearing, TikTok deliberately throttled clips that were critical of the CEO and boosted the ones that were favorable to the CEO. Now, I'm no Sigmund Freud, so I can't imagine how this was done on scale. Because there are so many clips in the vast ocean of content, I can only surmise a guess that they have incredibly sophisticated technology at hand that allows them to monitor content en masse and prioritize certain clips over others. I don't like to toot my own horn, but I have a lot more journalistic integrity than some of the Harvard graduates you see on TV. So I'm gonna actually give you both sides of the story as opposed to pretending there's only one side. There were clips that were rightfully disparaging the handful of droopy skinned lawmakers that made a fool of themselves asking dumb questions. And these clips had millions of views. I don't have a problem with this, but what I do have a problem with is not being able to find one congress member asking a legitimate question of the CEO and him not being able to respond in a satisfactory manner. And you expect us to believe that you are capable of maintaining the data security, privacy and security of 150 million Americans? I think that is a blatant display of how vulnerable people who use TikTok are. You couldn't take action after 41 days when a clear threat, a very violent threat to the chairwoman of this committee and the members of this committee was posted on your platform. You damn well know that you cannot protect the data and security of this committee or the 150 million users of your app because it is an extension of the CCP. Now let's move on to privacy concerns because I strongly believe that people should be able to have the option to sell their privacy and data if they so choose. Let them use the app at their own peril. Like who cares, right? It's their dick pics. China is gonna be in possession of halfway across the world. And I'm a hardcore believer of the fundamentals of America. So, and that's what liberty is about. Being able to do whatever the fuck gets you going, as long as it's not impacting other human beings. But at the same time, you have to let the users of these platforms be aware of how badly they're being fucked on the trade. I've always believed people should have an outlet to express their unfiltered opinions at any cost. But TikTok is not the place to do that. You have other public squares that are limited in their own right, like YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, but at least they're not as blatantly propagandistic in their algorithms. Now listen to this. Anything that shows China in a bad light is either scrubbed off the website like completely, or it's deboosted to a point of non-existence. Like one of the examples that is very popular in terms of how widely it's known that this content is not allowed on TikTok, that one of the lawmakers even brought it up uh, during the testimony. So something like the Tiananmen Square Massacre, I don't know how to say it, Tiananmen. Is it like Tiananmen, Chinaman, Tiananmen? I don't know how you pronounce that. Tiananmen, Tiananmese, Tiananmen, I don't know. I've read that like a lot. I've never really paid a lot of attention to how you read that word out loud. Tiananmen Square. Tiananmen Square. Anyways, so like that Tiananmen Square Massacre is virtually non-existent on the app. 
This is similar to what happened with Reddit after Tencent's uh, investment of $150 million in Reddit. By the way, Tencent is a subsidiary of the CCP. So after the investment of $150 million by a company acting as proxy for my man Xi Jinping in China, the change in content moderation of anything remotely anti-Chinese was immediately taken down. The recent alliance between China and Russia was nowhere to be seen on Reddit, even though international politics is the bread and butter of Redditors, especially when it involves the Ukraine. So to not be able to see anything about that trending on Reddit was a huge indicator of how much influence China has over what Western audience sees on apps controlled by them. Obviously, these apps don't fall directly under Beijing's jurisdiction because that would be a little too on the nose, even for them. So the companies are cleverly dispersed across a range of different nations, with their data centers being located in mainland China. So in short, the companies act as a proxy for the CCP if you have enough cognitive capacity to connect the dots. Reddit being in the pocket of the CCP is not closely worrisome to me because it's not as influential as something like Twitter is in terms of politics and current affairs. But Reddit in tandem with TikTok is quite a chokehold on the information flow that the CCP has. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I like the acronym CCP. It's something you can rap to like very easily. Now everybody from the CCP, put your motherfucking hands up and follow me. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's where I'm gonna stop. So let's get back to business. Oh my God, things I gotta do to keep you guys entertained. If you're a dumb wit who still hasn't realized the true magnitude of the situation, let me give you an example that should make it abundantly clear. There's a good chance of China invading Taiwan in the future. And with the recent alliance of Russia and China, it looks like it might happen sooner than you would have thought. When that happens, you can be certain that China will leverage everything it can to put a positive spin on the invasion or colonization or whatever you want to call it. Putting a positive spin on the whole thing will prevent any foreign intervention like what's happening with Ukraine right now. And you might be thinking in your beautiful round head that how would someone like China put a positive spin on an intervention, right? Well, let me tell you. The best way to do that would be for China to brainwash the 150 million Americans that use TikTok. That the quote-unquote partnership between Taiwan and China is in the best interest for both the countries and especially Taiwan because Taiwan is a small country and it could benefit largely from having the oversight of China and being given all the funds that it needs to become a more developed nation. Now, some of you loyal listeners who made it to this part of the video might be wondering, why does it even matter? Why does it matter if China is able to successfully brainwash 150 million Americans, right? Well, allow me to express my 300 IQ deductive reasoning. As corrupt as the US government is, and as strong a hold as the US military industrial complex has on the US government, the public opinion still holds a lot of weight. If the CCP can remotely turn a significant population of the US against its own government, and at the same time make China look like they're the good guys, that will be the perfect storm and it'll go a long way in ensuring that China is left alone in their mission to take over Taiwan. It's worth noting that people who are more politically inclined in America are much more likely to go out to protest in the streets. So China vis-a-vis -vis TikTok can mobilize people in the US to protest in the streets against any foreign intervention in Taiwan. Now let's for a second overlook the fact that TikTok also operates in almost every other country with the exception of India and Spain. Let's say the population of all those other countries have people that are inclined to think more critically and objectively at the whole thing. Let's say they're on the right path and they realize what China is doing is morally wrong. Without any financial and military assistance from the United States to Taiwan, anything that other countries contribute is going to be meaningless and not really all that impactful in the bigger picture. Why do I say that? Well, for better or worse, America right now is the only country on the face of the planet that has the backbone to intervene with the big guns. The US leads the world by a long shot with how much it's spent on Ukraine. It's 196 billion. That's more than the GDP of whole countries. Anyways, America also happens to have the world's most powerful military and there's no contest. The United States alone spends on its military as much as the next nine countries do on theirs combined. Now that should give you a sense of how important it is for the US public to not be deluded by propaganda on TikTok. And that's the reason I think TikTok needs to be banned. With all that being said, this was by far the most fun I've had uh, creating a video. And please, for the love of God, go over to my Patreon and make me half as rich as Vladimir Zelensky. Because once I'm rich, I'm going to be looking down at you from my private jet up in the air, bro. No, bro, I'm going to be as humble as Dalai Lama. So give me all your money. I need money, 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 money. Bro, I'm fucking dying and starving of no food, bro. Give me some fucking money. At least like $5 or something, though. 
I haven't made one penny so far. I've, I've spent so much money on trying to get this YouTube going. So you better fucking spend something on this video if you made it all the way to this uh, part of the video. All right, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. So this part of the video is being recorded two days after I finished recording the first one. And in the last two days, I have been privy to a set of new information that I think is very important for you guys to know. Apparently, the legislation that was introduced by the lawmakers in Congress had a lot more snuck into it beside banning TikTok as an app. So one of the things that it would give them the power to do would be to imprison someone for 20 years for using a VPN to circumvent the ban of TikTok. And this is just one of the things that they snuck into the legislation for banning TikTok. And there were a whole lot of other things that I'm not gonna go too deep into because I don't think that's relevant to this video, but I thought it was important for me to add an addendum to this video. So now upon reflection, I don't think the government should have the ability to have that much power. If you know anything about the government, you better believe that they won't hesitate for a second before they wield the newly acquired power against its own law-abiding citizens that they happen to disagree with. I understand that this is kind of a dilemma because on one hand, you don't want China to have that much access to your information. On the other hand, you also don't want to give your own government the ability to imprison you for something that they disagree with you on. So with this new information, the only thing I can think of in terms of going about the TikTok ban would be to educate the population of the gross violation of their privacy by TikTok. That's the only thing I can think of to prevent the mass harvesting of your own data by uh, the CCP. I would very much appreciate if you could um, speak out in the comments down below and tell me what you think about the whole thing. Because it seems like a mess. There's no neat way to go about this in my opinion.